Okay. Now, what colors we're going to use? Well, in all due fairness, I mean, clearly we're going to paint it the same colors that you see here. But, we need this page here as an example because unfortunately there's no single page where you can see the kit you know in, t in its entirety all right so i have a lot of paints here that i have that i haven't used mainly the finisher patents i've used this on many other kits um last year and uh, the last one i was using was done penelope which I could have done better but I'm going to use this on this kit. And right now, as you can see, I'm holding uh, pure yellow. So I'm going to be using it on the, on the yellow parts that you see here. As for the blue, I'm going to be using pure blue. I'm going to use that right there. I'm also going to try a technique which I'll explain in a minute. But let's, So I have this first, the blue and the yellow. Red, of course, will be pure red. For that so we got the blue yellow and red I have no white of, of, of the finisher I used them all up so I'm going to be using MS white that I recently picked up but as I'm reviewing this I'm seeing some um, let me see here I'm thinking of doing some some two-tone white because I see a lot of it here well, no, not completely a lot, but just enough for it to get away with it. So, the joint areas, you can't see it, but it's there. And I'm thinking of painting it a different tone. And it's either a choice. I'm thinking of either doing number 325, which is gray. Which, as I remember, as I mentioned before, this, is, it, it, this can get away as a white color tone. But I'm going to probably use it for this for like the inner frame so the little inner frame that's in the shoulder parts like the connections um, the actual this connector here that connects to the to the torso to the uh, tor um, torso um, I don't know if these are separate parts the actual white part that connects the arm the forearm you know the elbow and maybe this little the, the collar itself I can paint this color tone. The side, the little side thing here, um, the side skirt thing, that's another one right there. You have these two parts here that can be painted uh, this color. Um, I'm thinking the whole f um, s assembly of this and this. Um, but I'm seeing the back part of the of this thing here, so I could probably just paint this part in front and then this one in the back, and leave the and leave this one solid color. Then down here in the feet, um, thinking of maybe doing the front and the back of that, and this part here. So one, two, three, those three parts. Um, I didn't see the if there's something in the back. I am also reminded to the fact that this is actually a two-piece part that has a seam line in the back, so I've got to be very careful with that. Unless it's a, 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 a unless I could turn it into a panel line, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll discuss that later on. Now I could use this, or I could use foundation gray. But I see that this one's a little bit more darker than this. So I will omit, omit the foundation gray. Um, for red, oh, I just mentioned that, the red already. Um, the other color parts was the darker parts. Um, I was going to use gunmetal, but as I'm looking at it right now, it, looks, it, it seems to be a little inappropriate for something like this. So I'm going to use something that I've always been comfortable with. Um, let me see here. I could use Phantom Gray. Phantom Gray looks good. So yeah, we have that. I could use Xeon Gray because there's a, it's actually a more lighter tone, but that's a more darker tone. There we go. Now, one last thing before we begin. And I've always had 
um, this product nearby all the time. Look, it's now escaping my oh, grasp. There we go. I still have a little bit left of micro black primer micro filler. I'm going to appreciate this. Clearly, I'm going to appreciate it. Um, see if I can get the most out of it, and uh, I'm going to see if I can do some weathering with a combination of ground brown and uh, multi black. I've been trying to figure out where I can where I can introduce these two products, the uh, multi gray and multi white. I don't know how you can do multi white, but multi white would probably be for the rifle. But then again. How would you know that? Will this look good on something? Well, I see like an inner frame part here, this dark part there. So will it be for this where I can highlight it? I don't know. Because another thing is, um, as you can see how there's a highlight in the blue, I'm thinking of probably using this color and just do a highlight, like a light, like very, just spray it very light to show off that, to highlight it. So you have the a blue you have a um, you have the black you have the blue and then you have the highlight of this to, br to bring it out as a three tone right there I'm gonna see if I can try to do that both on the um, both on the blue and the red Zaku Aurelius did a beautiful highlight with his Manzinger Z uh, 160 scale this year and I forgot the paint I gotta look it up and see if I can buy it because I like what he used um, and I see if we can try to get it and replicate that on this kit. So that is my idea. That's what I'm going to do with this uh, G40. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's begin building high grade Gundam G40. So I actually had a silly idea, um, and I was trying to grab my hand on the Beyond Global unit of the RX-78 II <clears throat> that came out last month. I was actually thinking of uh, doing a multi-build series where I'm building the Revive the Origins, the G40, and the Beyond Global, all at the same time. It's, it was a silly idea, of course. I was trying to see if, how I was going to, how I was going to, you know, uh, format this, or how I was going to present this. Um, was it going to be like what I'm doing right now, where I'm removing all the parts and putting on the trays for each one? But then I forgot, I only have a few trays. So like, for example, I right know this tray is going to be for all the white parts that I'm putting in here. Then this other tray is going to be for the red, the yellow, and the blue. The darker ones will be on this tray for that. So that's understandable. Um, but then again, I would have to do the same thing for the other co for the other mobile suits. So I would have to have a total of 12 trays, maybe a little more, to do something like that. So logistically, that would have been an impossibility for me to do something like that. Actually, I'm going to need the other one. Where's the other? Oh, yeah, there it is. <clears throat> I'm going to remove the parts 
um, but from the actual part here and then just carefully remove it with the the mark with the um, with my nippers so I'm going to I'm going to use my old um, cutting uh, cutting nippers to remove this from here so you have the leftover flat um, plastic on this and then I'm just going to um, remove the excess using the finer tool you know uh, the Gundam the Gundam um, Gundam planet uh, nippers or uh, use uh, you know Olaf, uh, the Olaf uh, knife so that way it'll be easier for me to clean. I also made a, um, I was actually talking to a couple of friends of mine in regards to the white paint and surprisingly everybody's agreeing with me that wow there's nobody has white paints out there now I'm saying no one has white paints for for um, for Mr. H Mr. Hobby brand or the Gundam color um, paints because actually those are really good paints but that doesn't mean you have to use those you could use any other colors uh, uh, any other brands um, Tamiya paints is good I'm not not knocking them out and as a matter of fact I have a bunch of those I I do have a bottle a book a big bottle of um, white paint by Tamiya so I could easily decide to go uh, the acrylic route and do that um, I have seen the acquiesce colors from from the Mr. Hobby line so I could use those but I'm not familiar with those so I'm assuming it's okay um, However, I did get the opportunity to order uh, more white paints. Um, some there, there was a person on eBay that was selling it, and I, I picked up two bottles of, and it's the big bottles, not, not not this size bottle, but the little higher up version. I believe this is 10 millimeters and 10 milliliters, while the one that I purchased is 18 milliliters. So I could utilize that, the Tamiya paints. I can also go um, make ammo um, because I, make, I had a set of uh, acrylic whites from make ammo lines, um, but I think I used up used it up and I don't have any more. And that was because there was a there was a Gundam set. There was a sorry, a Mecha color set that was all the primary colors for the RX-782, and I utilized the white. I forgot what kit it was that I used it so that's something that if I feel like it I can go again the acrylic art, it doesn't have to be lacquer I'm more comfortable with lacquer than I am with acrylic um, I'm not saying that I, I don't want to use it there are people who do a mixture of both which is a good thing you know and considering the the kits that I'm um, that I want that I have that I want to paint white, um, that you know, I want to have an abundance of them if I can, if possible. Um, I think the one paint that I will probably never use, and not because I don't want to use it, I just uh, it is very difficult to paint with or um, clean, you could say, and that is uh, enamel-based paint. I mean, once you go enamel, I mean, the, that paint will last forever. But putting it on, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story for that. All right, so let me finish up all these parts, put them in the tray, and then I'll begin cleaning them. Give me a few moments.